Going for that awesome run, and again, shout outs to Link Dead. We've got $25 from Tina Hacks 174 Yo, Dode, it's a blast to see such a talented and multifaceted runner present such a challenging run. Please don't use any task-only glitches in this run, okay? Good luck. We're all counting on you. Donation goes to Dode's Choice. $150 from Hey. Dode, good luck on the run, Dodie. $25 from Kristen. I hope you guys are ready to shell out some cash. $50 from Tazzy. Putting up some coins for Mario and the Portal 2 bonus run. I'm glad all is going so well. Reminder that the Portal 2 run is solo co-op, and we need to get $200,000 raised by the end of Breath of the Wild. It's currently sitting at about 14500 Get those donations in if you want to see the Portal 2 solo co-op run. $200 from Double A Ron M. My wife is watching Gilmore Girls in the other room and losing her mind. Glad I have SGDQ to keep me sane. Love the work you're doing. Thanks to all the runners, couch crews, behind the scenes workers who make this event possible. $500 from Zeller. I've had the privilege of being able to watch for many years now. I appreciate that the event is not only still going, but stronger every time. Thank you for such a great event. It is truly one of a kind. $125 from Man at Arms. Doing great on the Super Panga World run. I didn't get my donation in soon enough, so my pun about the cape won't mean as much, but I hope that Dode could escape this level without further harm. $150 from Anonymous. First time donating. I love GDQ, and I finally caught it live when I had the money to donate. $150 from Mad Cow 237 That run made me want to shell out some money. That's a terrible pun, and I'm not even sorry. $250 from Snow Rook, second time watcher, first time donor. Always amazed at the skill of the runners and the support for a great organization. $125 from Semper Rabbit. Unfortunately, I've only caught Dode and everyone on the couch on YouTube, but they have all provided endless entertainment. Here's to a fast dull finish. $150 from Yuki87, first time donating, second time watching. Thanks, thank you all for all you're doing. It's amazing. Keep going. Greetings from France. Shout out to the great commentators and runners. $87.50 from Amutate. This run was so impressive, and the commentary was fantastic.
Coming up next, we have Super Mario 64, 120 star run by Cheese05. We're going to take a quick ad break and then I'll pass you off to the fantastic Yellow Killer Bee. And welcome back, everyone, to Summer Games Done Quick. Thank you so much to Sniper King 19. I'm Yellow Killer Bee, and I'm going to be hanging out with you for the next game. Coming up next, Super Mario 64, a run I know a lot of you have been waiting for. That will be starting very shortly. Until then, I'll be kept keeping you company with some donations. We have $200 from Meatbag Esquire, who simply says, Portal 2 hype. Speaking of Portal 2, we have a Portal 2 solo co-op donation incentive that is going to be coming up right after Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is later tonight. If we can raise $200,000 towards that game, then they will be running co-op mode, Portal 2, just one person, we definitely want to make sure that gets met. Right now, it's at about 18000 or 200000 I believe in you guys. We can make that donation incentive. We also have $25 from Sunbun202. Shoutouts to the GDQ community for getting Super Panger World trending worldwide on Twitter. Putting this towards the Portal 2 bonus run. Good luck to all the runners today. We've got $500 from Tang Ang. No sub 30, but still a very good run. I dare anyone else to finish this hack one mole time. We got $20 from Obi. Thank you, SGDQ, for hours of after work and weekend enjoyment. Super Panga World is incredible, and the rest of the day looks like a fantastic watch, so I have to donate for the dedicated runners and incredible causes. I'm watching with my salamander, and he would cry if I didn't save the animals. Oh, thank you, Obi. So 
So just a reminder that Games Done Quick is now accepting bits during SGDQ. Also, when you cheer during SGDQ, Games Done Quick will donate one cent from each bits cheered to Doctors Without Borders. We've got $30 from Mr. Ether Bunny. My girlfriend and I are 3,000 miles away right now, but we're both having a cross-country date, eating pizza, and watching this 120-star run. I've never had a donation read on stream, so hopefully this one makes it through. Well, it made it through. Congratulations on your cross-country date. That sounds amazing. We've got $150 from Bad Kemming. Portal 2 solo co-op co sounds easier when you consider that there's not another person to argue with. <laughs> We've got $300 from Quintopia, $15 per death in that awesome Panga World run, plus a bonus $15 for the excellent puns. I'm ready for some excellent SM64 action. Me too, Quintopia. We've got $50 from GFX Ambassador. Had to donate for the Mario block. Lost far too much study time in college with 120 stars in M64 prioritized. Good luck, cheese. And speaking of the Mario block, we have some excellent prizes you can donate for during the Mario block. We've got a Mario Perler coin, coin bank. We've got Defending the Kingdom Mario art. We've got some Perlers with Goomba Perler, Mario 3D Perler. Peach and Mario pixel painting. We have a ton of prizes for this block specifically. So if you'd like to see those, go online to gamesdonequick.com and check out pictures of them. Uh, see what the amount you need to donate to be eligible for those prizes is. And get those do donations in before the end of the Mario block. All right, it's time. Are you ready for Super Mario 64? Yeah! Yeah! I know I'm ready. <laughs> All right, and with that, I will throw it over to Cheese05. Hello. How are you? <laughs> All right. So, uh, Super Mario 64, everyone. The best game ever made. Arguably. Okay. <laughs> no <laughs> argument. <laughs> uh, 120 star speedruns, man. Um, I mean, one of the most famous speedruns of all time. Uh, fast pace action, some RNG here and there, you know. And yeah, it's just a fun ride. It's just non stop action. A few breaks, but uh, it's good stuff. I hope non -stop. you guys enjoy it. Yeah, non yeah pretty much. Right, are we ready to go? Or? We are no, ready. Oh, no, it's okay, Cheese. You don't have to introduce us. Fine. Wait, no, you guys introduce yourself or? Here's Nightwing. Yeah. Yes, I'm Nightwing. I'm Blue Bob SRL. I am Simply. I'm Punication. I don't know if you can see me. Hi. And here's Hella Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready to go? All right, then. Let's go. Let's party. <sighs> Let me just make sure my file is erased. And anybody that's not aware, Cheese is the current world record holder for Super Mario 64, so we should be seeing some pretty excellent action coming at him from today. Epic gameplay. All right, I'm ready. So I'm going to count down, right? Okay, three, two, one, go! Woo! Okay, so uh, this game starts off pretty fast. Um, the first trick in the game actually is called 
LBLJ stands for Lobby Backwards Long Jump. It's uh, one of the hardest tricks in the game, I would say, and it's like the first thing I do. So please don't laugh if I fail it. Thank you. Uh, if I fail it, though, it's not a big deal. Uh, I could just go to VOB and do Bomb Clip Star, or I mean, you could try LBLJ again, but I probably won't because if you fail it too much time, so it would just be kind of embarrassing. Uh, um, if done optimally, it saves about yeah. 10 seconds over the other route. So I'm going to let the coach do most of the commentary for a little while, and I would focus on trying to, you know, play good. So let's go. <coughs> also right at the start, there's a trick called lack to skip. Um, if you long jump on the very edge of the bridge, uh, you skip the text of lack to just explaining how the camera works. I think it saved like eight seconds. Oh, no. Yeah. No. No big deal. It's nothing huge. Just uh, hit the LBLJ. Just a reset if you have to do one for run, no problem. <laughs> All right, let's go. And this is the method that you'll see in a lot of the shorter runs, like the 16 star that started off, but we didn't really start using it for 120 until mm, relatively recently. This should be close. There. Woo! That probably made it for the time that he lost on a Laga 2 skip. Yeah. <coughs> The reason it works is because Mario's backward speed doesn't have a cap, and every jump builds up speed, so he hit, was under an invisible ceiling, and he was just spamming backwards long jumps, and it builds up enough speed to clip. Another kind of interesting thing about the uh, LBLJ is that She's recently got one of the world records before he got the 139 without using LBLJ. So he knew that the ceiling was, or the, excuse me, the floor was even lower than it could have been because he skipped doing that. And now he's got it down pretty pat. Uh, so we just called, got what's called Shigeru Cycle. Um, it's one of the fastest cycles you can get in Dark World. Um, before that, it's called Normal Cycle, etc. And each one's about a four second difference. There's a faster t cycle, too. That's called Zaya Cycle, but he didn't go for it. I don't blame him. It saves like a second. Alright, that'll hit. Okay. The hitbox is kind of weird on the Bowser throw. Um, I think it depends on how far you are from the bomb as well. I think the further away you are from the bomb, the less frames you have to hit the bomb. Uh, that Bowser could hit the bomb as well, so... Yeah. Yeah, and Bowser throws are one of those things that plague every runner at one point or another, so... That's a, a key thing that we got to make sure we do typically good in speedruns. So now we're headed to Wom's Fortress, um, a very technical stage. Uh, it's very difficult to pull everything off. Uh, so we kind of read it that way so you get there first because you're going to have a lot of resets in that stage. Yeah, this category starts off really fast. Um, you do LBLJ, Dark World, Wom's, and it's all pretty hard. After Wom's, it starts to die down a bit, though. It gets a little bit easier. Nice. Nice. So if you'll notice, after every star, he'll go down to the bottom menu option. Like there, he just went down two menu options, and you'd think that'd be slow, but you need to wait a little bit before you can even press an option. So during that time, you can move up and down, but you can't press A. And each time you save on a star, you lose eight frames. And that's about 0.24 seconds per star. It adds up to around 30 seconds. So he's going to try to not save on any star. Yeah, and that was uh, new cannonless. It's a guaranteed strat to get that star. Usually you have to pull yourself out of the cannon, and that takes forever. So they just decide to get a perfect setup so that they don't have to worry about you know all the weird stuff that has to do with that clipping through there. Um, until a couple of years ago, players actually just would run off the plank, uh, and it's very precise that way uh, and cause a lot of resets. So they opt to lose a bit of time, but uh, get the consistency of the setup. And I suppose we didn't even talk about Owlis, the first trick he did. That's an incredibly difficult trick. So that jump there is pretty tricky, but he's just going to opt to do uh, one cycle slower on 100 coin. This is also known as half cycle, um, just because of the way that that wooden plank moves. Yeah, this is about 8 seconds. Yeah, it loses like 8 to 10. It's it's pretty difficult to uh, make that cycle. Yeah. 
Not too bad, though. Otherwise, a good hundred, yeah. Yeah. I have way too many coins. Okay. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> this is late, but I'd like to give a shout out to Sock Folder for finding the canvas setup. Yeah, huge shout outs. He didn't spend much time either. He's just like the beast at finding all this cool stuff. All right, so this next star is like the hardest star in the game. Yeah, every, everyone needs to be quiet. This is by far the hardest star. Yeah, please. Ooh, All right, you yes. got it. Yes. Good job. Legendary. <laughs> Legend. Um, just one thing to note, too. Um, at any chance you can, ground pounding to get a star uh, is faster because it cancels the animation and Mario drops faster, um, which then starts the ending cutscene quicker. So it's a little optimization that you'll probably see done for a lot of stars. Yeah, you either want to fall into a star or ground pound under it. If you jump into a star, you'll go up and then down, and that loses a lot of time. One embarrassing thing that happens to a lot of people is they'll try to ground pound, and then they'll end up backflipping the star. Yeah. And then loses a lot of time. And it basically loses all the time you save throughout the entire run <laughs> just for ground pounding Pretty and much. just accidentally backflipping. That's a common mistake. So that mistake happens a lot where, I don't know why, um, especially in one fortress, like I, you press A and B to jump dive and sometimes the A button doesn't register or you press B first instead of A and he does a dive instead of a jump dive and you just fall down. Yeah, that's one of the things about Super Mario 64 is that it's so precise with its movement that it's a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to play, but easy, like simple mistakes happen sometimes that you just can't do anything about. This upcoming star is called Aquarium. It's really easy, but in order to get like a really optimal Aquarium, you have to do early turns. And sometimes um, you'll turn too early and you'll miss a coin, so you have to like swim around. It loses a few seconds. Hopefully he doesn't do that. Yeah, that's mostly what Good Swing is all about, is just cutting your corners as tight as you can. Um, and then another thing to note, mostly in swimming stages, is a lot of lag. So we try to reduce that by using cameras that uh, keep things off screen, which you'll see a lot in Jolly Roger Bay coming up. Yeah, he's actually going to lag reduce right here. Yeah. See, this camera, like he can't see ahead of himself very well, but it reduces lag. So you see that a lot throughout the run, especially in JRB. Yeah, if you did no lag reduction, you'd easily lose minutes. You'd lose a lot from the swimming levels. The ship in JRB lags like crazy. Like that sea left right there, if you just looked forward, you'd have already lost seconds just from looking forward. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah, what you're meant to do is you want to swim around and you get the eel out of the ship and then you swim into the loading zone. But he did two things there. He clipped through the corner, which for whatever reason, if you just keep swimming into it, you'll clip. Yeah, you have to go, t you have to, go to the right so that you can clip through. It, yeah. it saves a lot of time. It's not that specific. If you go a little bit to the left, though, it won't yeah. work. Yeah, the clip itself is pretty easy. The harder part is actually getting into the loading zone without hitting the eel. Mm -hmm. Coming up, he's going to use the punch or B in water to clip through the wall here. It's a little time save, but um, it's used in the 100 as well to scale up walls. Like, it, it'll scale you up the wall or it'll push you right through, and as you saw, he just clipped down into... Like, normally you'd swim down. 
to get into the cave. And you can actually just swim right through it, but it's very specific and I don't really understand. We don't really understand how it works. Do I have time for a quick donation? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. We have $1,000 from Carl Sagan42. Woo! He says, here is payment for my sins in Super Punga World. <laughs> That's absolutely crushed last year's donation total. Thank you. All right, so for this star, the intended strat is to use the metal cap, but if you just swim optimally, you can just grab the star through the jet stream. There's one other star like this in Dire Dire Docks, but because of this, you can just skip the metal cap entirely. Yeah, but you, you need wing cap and uh, vanish cap, though. Yeah, you never press the metal cap switch. You only need it for the metal cap star, as you'll see in HMC. So yeah, you'll see a lot of weird lag reductions here. Um, if you didn't do any here, you'd probably lose like a calendar year. <laughs> Maybe two. Yeah, this is, the, this is a 100 coin. You're only allowed to miss one coin, really. Um, a fun fact about this is that this area has 104 coins, so if you actually miss one of the blue coins, then you actually cannot get the 100 coin star. But you have to like screw up really badly to miss one of those. I think it's one of those things everybody's done once. Yeah. <laughs> I believe there's four red coins in this 100 plus reds. That the red coins are in a clam. And if you swim just right, you can get a red coin without waiting for the clam to open. Because the intended strat would be to just wait for it to open, then swim and get the red coin. Yeah, the but previous one you did there, the second one is the most precise. Yeah. All the other ones are not too bad. So here he's going to use the punch to scale up the wall very quickly. Just barely grabbing those reds out of the clam. It's it's decently lenient. You can be another donation if you want. All right, we have a one thousand dollar donation from Light Guy Forty Two. He says, "Long time watcher, first time donator. Let's see Portal Two broken." I agree. If you have a very fast 100 coin here, uh, by the time you reach the ship, the ship will be going up so that you can side flip onto it. But he didn't go fast enough for that. But that's like a sign that's really good. Overall, not too bad of a 100, though. Yeah. Um, he's going to be getting into the cannon for the next star here. Um, in the Japanese version, the star is not inside of a box, so this star is actually like seconds faster, and is like, I'd say pretty much why Japanese is faster than U.S. in this category. He got it. Nice. Nice. Really precise shot there. Mm. Wasn't sure if it's going to work or not, so it took like a second to make sure. Uh, one recent thing that people started doing in runs is called the Simp Cannon Shot. Um, <laughs> Made by yours truly. Yeah, basically you just hold fully in the direction and then you try to press A at the exact time and it, it can save a lot of time, but if you miss it, it uh, can be problematic. Yeah. If you miss it by going too low, then you can just swim and get the eel star, which doesn't lose time at all. But if you go, if you overshoot it, then you'll lose time due to lag. Pretty decent JRB. Now we have the slides, which are um, some of the favorite things for viewers because it's one of the few stars that actually have a timer, so they like to try and guess what slide time you'll get. 12.5 AV. 12.6. 12.6 is what I always go with. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 12.6. What does it say? 12.4. Yeah. 12.6. Yeah, right there. That's our guess. 
That's the, that's the couch guess. Oh, that's that's like 12, 12. 7 or 8. Yeah, or eight. eight that was yeah. really bad. No. <laughs> that was so bad. We got that's another right. one. Yeah. We, we got another one. Yeah, you do this twice because there's the one where if you have to beat a certain time and then there's just the one in the box. So he'll try he for 12-6 this time. He had Mario Cam there to reduce lag because uh, the light shining down causes lag. Yeah, it's actually very laggy. You, lose almost a, or you save almost a full second just by going to Mario Cam there. So flying, like swimming in this game, is mostly just about um, turning at the right time. You want to turn a little earlier than you should so that you can catch the coins or whatever you want to get while turning. And that was a pretty good win cap right there. Also, well, you, you also don't want to... You also don't want to go like too high up or else you go too slow. Like, so it's not only like just early turning. Yeah, you try to get the, the right parabola. Yes, okay. if you will. Well said. Thank you. You also don't want to land in between hitting the switch <coughs> and getting the star, because then you get another text box, and that just spends more time. Here's my guess. That might be a 12-6. Ah, uh, oh. 7. No. <coughs> the sign's bad luck. <laughs> So now he's going to go to Bob-omb Battlefield for the first time, whereas if you were playing through this game just casually, you'd go to this stage first because it's the only stage you can go to and where we would usually get our first star. But due to the glitch we did at the beginning, we were able to start off with Dark World. Yeah, so he doesn't have to go back to enter this stage, so that saves a lot of time. Yeah, because what, what you would do is you can't finish this stage right off the bat because you need wing cap, and to get wing cap, you need 10 stars to uh, be able to look up into the sunlight in the middle of the lobby to spawn in the wing cap stage. You'd see another, another use of uh, bomb clipping in SSL, and it's much more impressive, much harder as well. Yeah, so you grab the bomb when it's about to blow up, and for whatever reason, it gives you a lot of backwards momentum. And if you have that momentum and Whenever you throw something in this game, Mario kind of gets pushed back. You use that plus the speed, and it gives you just enough to clip through. There's another thing to note, actually. I think on the first wall kick there, um, she's got a first frame wall kick. Um, so you have four frames to wall kick, and if you do on the first frame, you actually get the same speed that you had going into the wall plus a small percentage. So sometimes, usually you want one, but sometimes they're hard to react to, and uh, he did a good job of doing that there. Yeah, and it can also mess up tricks. Like if you're trying to do Owlus and you get a firsty, you won't be able to cl clip into the cage because you'll have too much speed. So a second frame wall kick is pretty ideal most times. All right, the next star is the Cooper race, and a good a good race time is like sub 18 seconds. Um, He's going to go to the top to like finish the race and then go back down to open the cannon. He doesn't open the cannon at the start because he has to wait for the Koopa anyways to go back to the top. So he doesn't lose time opening the cannon. And then as soon as you finish the race, the Koopa speeds up, which is why you want to finish as fast as possible. That was weird. I don't think I would have made it with four, so I just did extra wall kicks yeah. to make sure. Yeah, so like a high 20 or 21. Yeah, so even though I lost about four seconds to the actual race, in real time I'd only lose about maybe a second. You probably have time for like one donation. All right, we've got a big one. We've got $10,000 from the Yeti. Ooh. <laughs> it says, hey all, Yeti here. We are so hyped for Mario 64. This donation puts us at $125,000 raised for Doctors Without Borders from our collection. Thank you for all your support. We will be, which reminds me to tell you, you can still order items from until July 9th at Midnight CST. Also stay tuned for a special finale item, which we'll be releasing, releasing right before the Earthbound run. Put our donation towards hitting that sweet, sweet two million mark. We can break AGDQ's record. I know it. I believe in you. I believe in us too. Thank you, the Yeti. 
Yeah. Okay, so really, really big RNG star here. Um, I'll let the couch explain about it, really, because I got to focus. Like right there, he's already yeah. missed two coins. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bad RNG. Um, yeah, most of the RNG is at the end. Um, there's four, depending on how many coins you uh, have going there, three to four pulls. Um, you basically run around them three times, and then five coins pop out. Um, and the way they pop out is random. So sometimes they can get some really bad patterns that make you lose a lot of time. Yeah, if you get really bad RNG, you can lose maybe five to 10 seconds. Off so, of perfect RNG. Yeah. Let's just hope he doesn't lose the run to RNG. <laughs> that would be tragic. That's a good meme. That's pretty good flying. A really good amount of coins to have when you're done flying here is like probably like 66 coins and up. Um, if you have like 65 or less, I probably wouldn't skip one of the log poles at the end. Yeah, this would probably be 65. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's probably going to just go around all four of the poles. Which loses a few seconds, but it's not too bad. So if he had 66, he'd grab that box to the right, throw that, get three coins, and then kill maybe a Goomba, depending on how many coins he needs. And he wouldn't have to spend time running around one of these poles. Yeah, with 65, you want to get four coins, but you have a little bit of leeway, so you can kind of be a little aggressive. Maybe Ooh, skip a coin here or there. That was nice. Yeah, that was, that was hot. That was some good coin collecting right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can miss that one. Yeah. Uh, so. That one coin. Yeah, not the greatest RNG overall, but he reacted to it pretty well. Good ground pound. You, you can see what, what these guys are saying. is Sometimes those coins just have a mind of their own and ruin everything. Mm -hmm. It's probably the, the second most RNG dependent 100 coin, uh, the first being SL, probably. And a lot of 100 coins are done with red coin stars because you get 16 coins from getting all eight reds, and they're usually scattered around the map in a way that you can get other coins while you get them. But there are some stages where you'll do a different star with 100, as we'll see later. This is always a fun one for casual play, but it's kind of frustrating. Yeah, to spawn this star, runs. you have to get the middle coin and all of the rings. And if yeah. you have the perfect shot, you can get all five. Yeah, I missed the first one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a little low or a little it, it high. Was, it, was, it was too low. Yeah. yeah. You want to aim like Goomba lower, bounce. like below uh. the coin in the middle, but not too low, or else you just miss it completely, which is what happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my least favorite stars in the game because even if you get a good cannon shot, sometimes Mario just, uh, I don't know, his flying is kind of weird and, and you can miss coins randomly. Yeah, one thing to note too is um, if Mario flies multiple times like he does in that star, um, when you land from the first fly, the angle that he has is stored. So um, if you have a bad angle when you go into the cannon there, uh, as soon as you get control of Mario in the cannon, he'll just like jolt at a weird angle and then you'll miss one. Mm -hmm. All right, he's done with lobby, which is like the first like main area. He's going to the basement now, which is like arguably the hardest part of the entire run. I think most runners think it's the hardest. Basement is a run murderer. Yeah, notorious run killer. So he's going to start basement by going for MIPS. And actually, in the Japanese version, MIPS goes faster. The first MIPS, there's two MIPS that you can get, which is the little bunny. One spawns at 15 stars, and the next one spawns when you get 50 stars. Um, that's one other thing, too, with... Uh the reason we got exactly 26 stars out of lobby is because that'll make it so that when we finish up all of basement, we'll have exactly 50. Yep, and, and then you can, can get the MIPS, and that's the only other star you'd need. Okay, so time for the, the hardest trick in the game. Um, I'm going to go for it once. If I don't get it, it's not a big deal. But uh, I'll let the couch explain it. We'll just let him do it, and we'll, uh, we'll explain after. He's probably got to focus here. Yeah. He did it.
Yeah, we, we weren't joking like we were in Womps. Like, that really is incredibly difficult. It saves, like, a max of, like, seven seconds. And if, if you do it in your runs, it's definitely the hardest thing to do in HMC. Um, the 100 coin, which he just started, has some tricky parts. Overall, not too bad, but you can lose a lot of time here as well. Um, the, the, other two, the other stars are fairly easy. Yeah, so uh, that BLJ is so hard because Cheese, if Cheese had any laps in his mashing the entire time he's on that elevator, he would have lost the BLJ. Yeah, you have to mash really fast. And then you also have to start holding back at a very precise time to get the right speed. All right, I actually okay. missed that coin. I don't know why, but um, I have to go back and get that coin. Yeah, that's one um, of the bigger mistakes you can make, but... Um, the, okay. Yeah, yeah, he destroyed the box, so he has to go up and take the elevator. Yeah. This is one of the things that can happen on 100 coin. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of little things that, like, very small mistakes on this 100 can lose you an incredible amount of time. And, like, what he did there was just didn't move enough in the air to catch the red coin. I yeah, need to, yeah. to ride the... Actually, huh. I'd say just ride it unless you know this long jump. Yeah, yeah I already know the long jump. I'd wait. <laughs> yeah. It can be really weird, actually. A beginner strat is to long jump right there to that little part and then drop down and ground pound the box. But if you don't know it, it can be kind of hard. just kind of goes to show, like, he gets the hardest trick in the game and then 100 coin just is like, yeah, I don't like you today, so... Yeah, that jump uh, where he missed the red there is, is a really actually difficult jump, but uh, that's one of the less common ways to mess it up. I should point out that this 100 coin route is actually different than the one I do. Uh, the, the difference is that he like kills the eyeball and like, gets all the red coins in the room like after he does his BLJ. Yeah, this route is there you go. Nice. somewhat new. Nicely done. It's, it's probably like, been it's around like for some years, years old. now, yeah. Um, people do this route because the boulder, like boulders fall behind where he just was. But if you do this route, you don't have to deal with them really. So it like removes RNG basically. Yeah, and if you do the other route, you'll grab the star back there where he grabbed that line of five. And that'll give all the rocks time to spawn. And it's just RNG whether or not you'll get hit by rocks as you run back to this room to get the star. There's a lot of uh, RNG to that eyeball as well. Like, you can actually lose multiple seconds on, like, really bad RNG compared to the best. So. That RNG's not great. Yeah. Because uh, it stayed up on the, on the platform there. That was really good. Handled that it very good. well, though. Yeah. I just went YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to go up on the platform. I almost grabbed the red coin star. I got really scared. He was uh, smart to do that. Yeah. Nice 100. Okay, the hard stuff in HMC is out of the way. It's like, it's like kind of smooth sailing from here. Actually, one thing you saw in the first star that we never really got to point out, uh, you'll see it more. Uh, they didn't put ceilings in HMC, so you can just jump over walls and it will take you to a completely different room. Um, so this triple jump here will kind of showcase that. And when you do this triple jump, he's holding back right now, because if you keep holding forward, you'll hit a death zone. So you hold back, wait a little bit, then go forward once you're under the death zone. That was nice. He'll do that one more time to get to Metal Cap. Yeah. It's the only time that you use a Metal Cap in the entire speedrun. Yeah. Unless you mess it up, then you hit the switch and get the Metal Cap. And yeah, the... that's only a backup. <laughs> yeah. Can I read a quick donation? Yep. Uh, we've got $305 from Dodecahedron, he says. <laughs> He says, as promised, here's $15 for each of the 17 deaths and $50 for the missed yump. And he says, keep it up, cheese. Thank you. So if you go really fast in the metal cap here, Mario won't blink at all before you get the star. Yeah, blinking meaning that the cap's running out. Yeah, it's called blinkless. And if he gets that, that's just like an optimal metal cap. Yeah, uh, this, this is not going to be it. Yeah. He started blinking before, but it's not, it wasn't that bad. And there you go. Only time you'll see Metal Cap used. Hope you enjoyed it. No one really likes Metal Cap anyway. <laughs> yeah, we only like Vanish Cap and Wing Cap.
So back in the day, people didn't know why this worked, why he's going to hit the switch and it's going to be... Oh, okay. Maybe. <laughs> All right, we're in there. All right, it won't work now unless he does a ground pound. Yeah. Yeah, so if, you, if you uh, triple jump, wall kick, like you want to wall kick at around the peak height of the triple jump. And if you do it right, then you'll be able to like fall down onto the switch and it'll be pressed down instead of having to do it back up. Yeah. Uh, that trick's called Christmas Miracle uh, because before they knew how it worked, they just said it was a Christmas miracle if you got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard that term in some time. Yeah, that's an older one. There's a later strat in TTM called uh, Breezeless, and it's kind of like the same concept, I guess. Like you want to triple jump while kick at, at like the peak height of the triple jump. Yeah, yeah, we'll explain that when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. Three more donations, if you would like. All right. We have $100 from Simp Mom and Simp Dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say, go, cheese, go. A special thanks and congratulations to all the runners for another incredibly successful Games Done Quick. Love you guys, the Simp Mom and Simp Dad. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs> All right, done with H and C. Um, now on to the, I mean, arguably hardest level in the game, uh, Shifting Sandland. This is such a punishing level that we actually have a uh, command. And yes! He got it. Nice. Nice. We actually Fast. have a command in Cheese's chat talking about how bad Shifting Sandland is for people that like just tune in for the first time and they wonder why Shifting Sandland always ruins everything. It just makes it easier because it messes up so much. Yeah. yeah, so here's another bomb trick. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so there's a lot of depth to that trick. He started by grabbing the bomb while it was exploding like previous. Um, then by jumping over the slope and jump diving back over, that made it so that the bomb won't explode and he can ground pound with it. He then rode it to the pyramid and ground pounded it in a uh, specific spot to clip through into the hole. Yeah, as you'll see in 100, the top of the pyramid comes off, but it still exists. Like the loading zone's still there, similar to cannonless. I don't know why that happened. That Fly, the fly guy shouldn't be that far away. Yeah, you want to run up the right half of that pillar, and the fly guy will be in the right spot. Uh, he kind of looked like he was there, though, so I'm, I'm that's nice. That trick is called topless because you don't go on top of the thing, like, you just do what he did. And so it's, it's a fastest strat. Yeah, the intended way to get in here is you go all around the level to unlock the, the top of the pyramid. You go in, and then you ride an elevator all the way down, and it gives you an entrance into this room. But instead, we can just wall kick and uh, grab the ledge. There was a time where Cheese experimented with a heart rate monitor and uh, shifting Sandland until he got to, to like close to the world record, held constantly the highest heart rate because it was always so nerve-wracking. Yeah, a lot of scary things, like HMC, it's just a very punishing level if you make small mistakes. Yeah, HMC has two really hard stars, and then the rest are kind of simple. Almost every star in SSL is difficult, which why as a stage, it's uh, I uh, most people would agree that it's overall harder. Yeah, it's probably like overall the, the hardest stage, really close, anyways. All right, so the next one I'm gonna do is. Um, I'm going to be the hardest star in the game. Oh, the most, I don't know, technical, one of the most technical stars. And the route for this, it's been around for a while, but recently uh, Cheese, myself, and many other runners have switched to this route. It's about two seconds faster. Normally you'd keep running, you'd get the wing cap, and you'd keep going that way to a different pillar, but instead you just do this triple jump here. Yeah, now we opt to get uh, three of the red coins uh, and one, I guess, fly, if you will, uh, where before we did two and two. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So here, you can actually lose a ton of time, and you can barely tell the difference between good flying or bad flying, except 
right here at the end with the nice. blocks, and that was good flying. So getting that coin's pretty precise as well. Uh, the seventh one there. Yeah, you go too high, you miss it, you have to turn around. If you go too low, you'll land, and you'll have so much speed, you'll just fall into the death zone. Nice. That was really good. That was yeah. good reds. <laughs> Round of applause. Beautiful reds. My heart weight went down like half. <laughs> All right, this is another quite big RNG star. Uh, lots of coins flying everywhere. <laughs> Most of it right here at the start. Yep. This is actually one of the few times that you'll see. Okay, a, that was, that was really good. pretty good RNG. A split between the hundred coin and the red coin. You can also get screwed over by like a pokey or two. Yeah. Oh. So the reason we don't do this with reds is because we go into the pyramid. Um, the red coin's all being out. Uh, I don't even think there's a there's yeah, not yeah, there's, there's not a hundred outside. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think this is the first one hundred without reds so far in the run. Can I read a quick donation? Yep. yep. We have $300 from Grand Pooh Bear. He, he says, this is for Dode's deaths. He also says, hey, Cheese, can I get a picture after the run? Oh, sure, baby. <laughs> Love, Grand Pooh Bear. That was a pretty clean outside. That part there can be very punishing. If you miss a secret, you fall all the way down. Yeah. Missing the third one's not too bad, but missing one or two is really bad. You have to climb all the way back up and go back to get to them. Pretty much always a reset in a real situation. Also, there's a glitch there we avoided on the Japanese version called Sound Glitch. Um, basically, after you spawn the secret star, um, if the first input that you do is with the joystick, um, or the, like you move before you jump. Uh, basically, the game just mutes, and as soon as you get a game, the game crashes. Or you get a star, the game crashes. Yeah, so we avoid it by doing a neutral jump, which is just holding the controller neutral or just not moving it at all and jumping first. It can also happen for uh, wet dry world secrets, but that's very rare. Yeah. If you're doing everything right, it won't happen in wet dry world yeah, secrets. Yeah, it'll never happen. All right, so this next star is like the second star, hardest star in the game. Yeah, we need some focus. <laughs> need some focus here, right? Some prayer. Oh, wait, never mind. That was easy. Yes! <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> How does he do it? <laughs> How many hours do you practice that story? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Literally zero. All right, this okay. is uh, one of the easiest stages. Yeah. Definitely the easiest basement level, like, by far. Yeah, it's not necessarily too easy of a stage, but it's just overshadowed by the fact that you just finished SSL and HMC, which are two of the hardest. There's a lot of spots where you can just, like, land in the lava and lose seconds. That's not to say he has to put his guard down, because as Punk A said, yeah, there's, there's lava, there's fireballs. It's, a lot of stuff can go wrong, but comparatively, it's... Bully's vacation. also getting in the way. So if you use enough speed here with the triple jump with the wing cap, or you just triple jump off of that thing, you can just fly over this gate and get that star. But what, the, what they intend you to do is go all the way around, and it's like a little obstacle course. So next up, he's going to confront some bullies and take care of them. Yeah, the next two stars are the bully ones. Um, the one with a single, like, big bully is easier than the other one. That's how we feel about bullies. <laughs> yeah, those are ones you probably struggle with as a kid, but in a speedrun, you literally just help them off, pretty much. Yeah, it's a joke. Uh, for, for the next star, there's going to be three bullies, and it's kind of easy to screw up because you, you kind of have to be in a specific spot when you like ground pound or whatever to knock them all down. I actually don't do the ground pound. Yeah, he does a single jump. Yeah, yeah that, that works as well. I don't know if it's like better or not. It's more preference. The thing is, if you, don't, you don't risk doing a backflip when you do the ground pound. Yeah, I did that early in a race and lost. So I just he did it. it. That's how it looks.
Really good lethal lava land so far. You just drinks it, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get it together. So um, for the 100 coin star, uh, you can either do it fifth or sixth, but you use a shell, and it spawns on star five. So you actually have to do it near the end of your solo. He's going to have to do it last. All right, I can get an invisible here, but let's just hope it doesn't happen. All right. We're good. Yeah, you can just lava boost onto that elevator, but I'm pretty sure there's another elevator around the volcano that you get on first, and then it takes you to that elevator. Okay, but so you we could just use the boost. You could, uh, you could read donations now during the start if you want. All right, we do have a $200 donation from Milk04 who says, Hi, Cheese. When I grow up, I hope to be just like you. Keep it up, man. <laughs> Milk04. <laughs> Milk04. <laughs> Uh, we also have $50 from PJ Kank 2 My wife and I are huge fans of cheese in Super Mario 64. Good luck today, and thanks for being a great streamer. Uh, one thing to note, too, with this, you can actually get lag in this star uh, that's purely RNG because uh, right off the beginning, uh, if one of the eyeballs is looking at you, you get lag because of it for some reason, hmm. even if you do the reductions. I wasn't sure where that lag came from, actually. Yeah. I didn't know either. I thought it was just random. I thought it was from flames shoot in randomly. This is really cool movement in the yellow volcano. Yeah, it's really fast and technical. I, I stuck at it though. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Beautiful. So that was really good. Great guys. All right, he's about to catch uh, the second MIPS in just like a few seconds here. And after that, he's going to Vanish Cap. Uh, I, I think everyone hates that level. <laughs> there's a lot of, of the most famous, walls. though. There's yeah, it's, it's pretty funny ceiling, that yeah. there's a lot of invisibles in Vanish Cap. They have the okay. Vanish Cap on. Yeah, that's actually a pretty hard grab. All right, so yeah, this next stage is my most hated stage, this next star. I don't like the Vanish Cap star at all. It's... Um, any mistake you make, you pretty much die. But uh, when you die, you don't lose that much time. But it's still kind of, you know, if you're going for world record or something, it's pretty much a reset. So it's quite, it's quite difficult. I don't know a good way to explain like invis walls. It's just sometimes they'll just do like a jump somewhere, and then they'll just bonk into a wall that you can't see. There's like I think that's a pretty great way to explain to it. invis walls. Because sometimes you just bonk because you do. Most of them are kind of avoidable, but because we kind of know where they are. But sometimes you just you hit new ones you've never seen before. Yeah, they don't move. They're all in the same spot every time. But just not being able to see them makes it hard okay. to avoid. He just got early alleys, but this is looking good. That was really good. Nice. 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 Siglamen. Siglamen. That was like a perfect vanish cap. All right, upcoming stage is Cool Cool Mountain. It's overall really easy, but there's some unfortunate things that can happen. Like, uh, he's going to start up with wall kicks or work. You can die here, which is obviously really bad. Or, like, on the 100 coin, you can miss, like, two coins on the slide and lose, like, a minute. Yeah, so if wall kicks do, in fact, work, it's good. But if it doesn't, then you usually die. Yes. Didn't die. That can happen too, but it's much better than just like dying. Backed it up really well too. Yeah. I think that's the only spot you use a backflip intentionally. No, you, well, it? I use a backflip in Wedge I will not I don't know if anyone does that to enter the stage oh, again. Oh yeah. Also in Rainbow Ride carpet, but that's just like Yeah. This is a CCM Reds. This is one of the levels you don't do like 100 coins with it. In my opinion, this is the hardest star in CCM. Like Dead. after this star is over, it's it's really easy. Getting that coin without actually grabbing the tree is fairly precise. Yeah. Like coins have like big hitboxes, and you just have to like 
You just have to like interact with the hitbox and not touch a tree. It's pretty precise. Not bad. Nice pretty reds. Good, yeah, good reds all around. So those of you that did the slide as a kid, um, yeah, let's just skip everything. Yeah, we can just go to the bottom. <laughs> Ooh, got if you like walk. fall down at the end, you can do a moonwalk like that. Yeah, he, fast. he just clipped the edge of the ice, yeah. like that little ice road, whatever the, you want to call that, and it changed Mario from a, a dive state to just falling. And if you're falling with speed and you're moving the stick, then you'll keep your speed. And he just held towards the door. It's pretty tough. So um, if you're ever at a party, this is probably the easiest trick to show your friends. Looks cool. Yeah, this looks like a crazy star, but it's pretty simple. Well done. Save the penguin. I got some penguin noises in the, in the crowd. Nobody? Damn. There we go. <laughs> No, because anytime anything makes a penguin noise, we throw it off the edge. Right. Okay, it's CCM 100. Can't miss many coins. Yeah, so this route allows for one coin miss. Um, if you miss two, you have to do the race over again. It's one of the more notorious run killers, but it's fairly easy. It's just something well, that everybody kind of does once in a while. You can actually grab the red coin to the left right there. You can grab it, but it's completely optional and slow. So Safety red. Yeah. Only well, like newer players do it. Yeah. So he can miss one coin. You're going to intentionally miss one coin on the slide. Yeah, because if, if you don't, then the star is higher up when you grab it. All right, he's he's pretty safe here. Like he can, he has to miss two. Yeah, those right yeah. there are the two spots where you normally would miss one. So I intentionally miss one here. Yeah. And there you go. That's the coin he missed on purpose. So if he got that coin, then the star would have just spawned one coin earlier and made it a little harder to grab and a little slower potentially. And you actually have to be able to hear right there to make sure you don't bump into the penguin, too. Yeah, so what happens there is kind of uh, like, so after I spawn the star, you can hear the penguin coming down. And uh, sometimes the penguin can come really late, like finish the race really late. And uh, if you long jump too early, the penguin will push you off and you would die. So once you just listen to the penguin and you hear it coming, you're pretty much safe and you could just long jump to the star. Yeah, if you grab that star, if you grab the 100 coin star before the penguin comes down, he'll just push you off. You'll get the 100 coin star, but you'll just get pushed off and then instantly teleported to the bottom of the level and then die. You Unless can. you're really lucky, then you might not get pushed off. You can read a donation if you want. This is a really like simple star. Sure. We've got $100 from Pun Mom and Pun Dad. Oh my <laughs> This is from Puncation's mom and dad. Love to Cheese 05 and simply and especially Puncation. Thank you. <laughs> Time to get off the couch and get in the chair for the world record, son. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> they say hugs from Pun Mom and Pum Dad, and Nine Ball says hi. Hi. <laughs> So a lot of people ask, during that last star, he grabbed 17 coins, and you'd think, isn't it slow to grab coins because they count up after you get a star? But unless you get, I don't know, maybe it's 50, some t somewhere it's like around 60 50. Something. Yeah, 60. You won't lose time due to grabbing coins because they count up while he's doing his little animation with his hat. And if you get 100 coins, then it, it'll still make it in time. It's like between 60 to 99, you'll lose time. And then if you get a ton of coins after 100. Uh, this star is called Go on a Ghost Hunt. Um, there's, two, there's two door clips you can do. I don't think he's going to do any of them. You can do one right there. They both save a little bit of time, but they're kind of hard. That, that, that optimization right there where you jump dive across, um, that, that, that's fairly new. It's called so like Lucas half a Strat. second. Because a guy named Lucas found it. Oh. 
Yeah. Interesting. So you could do another clip here, and the way the clips work is if you kill a boo, you have to wait a little bit before they'll talk, because you have to wait for them to actually die. Like, he'll kill this boo, but the star doesn't spawn until then, because the boo hit the wall, or they need to go a certain distance before they poof away. And if they're in the middle of that, and you're waiting for the text, you can just go through doors. So you use a long jump to clip through them, but he didn't go for them, because he doesn't do that movement. Yeah, we're just kind of in the process into, I guess, implementing it in a run. So I think a few players do it now. Yeah, it's kind of new to do it in runs. It's been known for a while. Uh, I guess one little tiny thing to note, too, is if you ever have a set of two doors, like when he enters the house there, um, going through the left door actually has a cutscene of opening that's 0 0.3 seconds shorter. So we're going to do that any chance we can. Yeah, if you go through the left, he pushes it. If he goes to the right, he pulls it and opens it. Too slow. That was terrible RNG. Should be back in time. Uh, yeah, you, you have a lot of room for error here. Yeah. But getting locked out there is one of the bigger time losses you can have. Yeah, if you spend too much time out back there, you can't clip back through that uh, wall that he went through without the vanish cap. So you'd have to go all the way to the front of the house. You could read a couple donations. Sure. We have $50 from Blog Thoven. Gotta donate during Cheese's run. I've been regularly watching his stream for the past few months, and his dedication and progress is truly inspiring. Put this towards Portal 2, because more games are always better than less. Uh, we have $100 from Cyderia7. Back in 96, my brother would set his alarm to go off at 1 AM and wake me up so he could sneak downstairs and play Super Mario 64 without my mom knowing. Looking forward to TikTok clock and an amazing run. Good luck, and may RNG be with you. Oh, oh my god. So well, that could have been very bad. Um, you can really bonk there sometimes, and it's kind of weird. Um, and if you fall all the way down, that's called, I guess, to factory. Um, and it, it loses, loses like a minute. Yeah. So that was incredibly close, and glad it didn't happen. Otherwise, a good 100. Yeah, tricky stuff is out of the way now. Yeah, just falling onto that last red is kind of a weird thing. So I wanted to bring up that uh, something that last donation said, and that's Cheese's improvement over the last few months. If you go from April 2016 to April 2017, Cheese improved the world record time over like six individual times. He got the, was his own world record over himself during that time. So yeah, he's been an incredibly rapidly improving player. Yeah, one of the fastest, if not the fastest, improving players. This is where you truly see the stupid hitboxes on the boos. There will be more donations. All right, we have $200 from Herfa Derfa. This is the first AGDQ I've been able to attend, and it's been an awesome experience. Thanks to all runners, staff, and attendees for making it such a great experience. Money goes towards unlocking Portal 2. And we have $150 from Oh My Swan. Donated a little already, but have to donate more now because one, Mario and Zelda hype, and two, Portal 2 needs to happen, and three, it's a good cause, so why not? Thanks, Oh My Swan. I guess here's kind of a good time to explain how the eyeballs actually work. Um, to get them to look at you, you basically have to be looking back at them. So like if you're facing away, they'll just keep spinning around. So you, kinda, you can cut your corners close and have it so you're just barely facing the pupil of the eye.
So he's going to go up to kill the big boo at the top of the mansion, and there is a recent optimization here where we used to ground pound twice, I think, but ground now... No, you would punch here. Or punch, yeah. But instead, before you long jump, Mario's in a crouching state, and that when he's in that state, he can actually do damage. So he just you use that state, and then you long jump, and then you move with the boo, and then you slide down, and when you're sliding, you also do damage. And the star instantly spawns because he pushed the boo into the wall. So, like, depending on where you kill a boo, the star will either spawn right away or it'll take a couple seconds. So I'm going to purposely save after this star just in case, like, something happens and the game crashes or anything that I'll have the save file. I always do that. <laughs> uh, so coming up is probably one of the hardest stars for beginners. Uh, Dire Dire Docks 100. Um, there's a lot of things that they'll just lose minutes on. Uh, there's some precise jumps. Uh, no, you'll also notice a lot of crazy lag reductions. Yeah, I definitely struggled with Die Dire Docks 100 when I was fairly new. But when, when you get pretty good, it's not nearly as hard, in my opinion. Yeah, there's a couple of big tricks. But besides that, it's a lot of swimming. But even the swimming can be hard, too. There's still some like kind of precise things you can screw up and lose a lot of time on, though. Yeah. So in the beginning here, he can miss one coin and be OK. So ideally, you don't want to miss any of these first uh, 17 or so. But once you get to the rings, you can be a little more crazy with your swimming to save time. We've got $100 from Critical Everything donating for this SM64 run. This was easily my favorite game as a kid, and I'm having a blast seeing it destroyed today. You do a ton of lag reduction here. You just hold C left the whole time. Yeah, as it's loading the sub, if you keep the camera facing forward, it, it lags. Probably one of the laggiest parts of the game if you don't yeah. do anything. The N64 hates the submarine here. So coming up after some sub movement, there's going to be two big tricks. There's called front sub, which is just a way to get on the sub from the front. And then there's a pretty precise triple jump wall kick he's going to do. And those are both really difficult. And I don't know if you mentioned, but the intended strat to get all these reds is I don't know what star you need to do to get the poles to spawn, but there is move-in poles that will spawn at some point. The, the submarine disappears when you do fire C, and doesn't that make the poles spawn or something? That might be it. Yeah, once you do fire C, I'm pretty there, sure nailed the, the poles are the yeah, that, that triple jump. <laughs> that uh, triple jump dive back there, that, that's kind of precise. You basically have to triple jump like near the edge of the submarine. So if you like overshoot it a little bit, you'll just slide down and lose like 15 to 20 seconds. That's a good thing you got it. And if you undershoot it, you just won't make it onto the platform. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, that was one of the better ones that I've seen recently. Um, so next up, there's just two swimming stars. Pretty basic. Um, if, you have time, if you have any donations, feel free to go ahead. OK, we do. We have $200 from Carday1842. Cannot count the number of hours spent trying to beat Super Mario 64. Feels good to see it destroyed. I also have $1,000 from Red28. He says, long time watcher, first time donator. A great cause and amazing runs and some of my favorite games like Mario 64 make this a must to finally donate. Looking forward to the bonus runs in Breath of the Wild and hopefully Portal 2. Special shout out to the people behind the scenes who del deliver us another successful GDQ. Greetings from Germany. So here he's going to do the sub star, the star that's on the sub, and that's going to spawn Fire Sea, uh, which is the second Bowser stage. Uh, it's very technical. I'd like to point out that you can go to the left here instead of the right, which is called front sub. Um, it's quite a bit harder 
than the strat that he's going to do. It only saves like a second, and it can punish you like really hard if you screw it up. Because if you screw it up, you're going to get a lot of lag, and it's hard to time the jump going up. So m most people, just about everyone, does this strat here. Yeah, this is not not too hard at all. Yeah, this strat's super safe. All right, we got Fire C coming up. Um, like Blue Bob said, uh, very fast and technical, really crazy stage. You can lose lots of time here. It like depends on what cycle you get, really. Yeah, so I guess to explain how it's cycle-based, there's an elevator uh, on the second level that goes up and down. Um, and if you get the fastest one, which is called Lava Boost, uh, basically you boost on the lava and you get on the elevator as it's going up. Uh, that's the fastest thing. Um, and if you just make a tiny mistake, you probably can't get that cycle anymore, and it actually loses a pretty good a chunk of time. So, Yeah, th this should be Lava Boost early, at least. But definitely. We'll see. Yeah, that's definitely it. Nice. All right, that's Lava Boost early, at least. So that alone is really hard, but this ending part is also quite technical. This is called good ending if he gets it. You land onto this elevator yeah, when, right when here. Yeah, you right when you launch up onto that platform and you don't grab onto the ledge, that's like, this is like a perfect fire scene. This is almost. absolutely insane. Oh. <laughs> that was doing a mistake. Very good fire scene. And that, that side flip that he did back there, when he grabbed uh, red coin number six, I think, that, that's fairly new. It's like better to do that when you make this cycle like a little slow, I think. But yeah, as someone who's watched Cheese run this game since two weeks after he started, and watch him just go after Fire C again and again, that was absolutely insane. Okay, so from here on out, you can read lots of donations or for like the next like two minutes. They're not really much exciting part. All right, we've got $200 from DDR Coder. I'm loving this Mario 64 run. This goes towards Portal 2, though it looks like we've got a ways to go before we hit that incentive. Go donate, people. I agree. We have Mr. Pobo who gives $25 and just says, Mamma Mia. <laughs> so I guess one thing to note uh, here with the Manta Star, these rings can, their hitboxes are really weird. Um, and if you don't get those first five, uh, the sixth one's okay, but uh, if you miss there, you can go right through the next few rings and they just won't even register. So you basically have to do laps around with the, with the Manta. This star coming up is another one of the jet stream stars that I think Punk A mentioned earlier in Jolly Roger Bay, where you're intended to get the metal cap, but if you swim optimally, then you can you just have enough speed and you're able to fight against the jet stream to get in. Yeah, and this one's harder than the one in Jolly Roger Bay because the star's actually lower. Yeah, it's much harder. Yeah, and you actually have to go through rings to activate the star yes. instead of just swimming to the star. Yeah, the some, sometimes when you start going down, you can like do it like too late, and so even if you go straight down after that, then you'll like go past the star. Yeah, it's a technique called fast swim that you've seen a few times, and it's starting your next stroke just at the exact right time. That was okay. really good. Yeah. It's so easy to get pushed out of that jet stream. You need to swim. Like, if you don't get it like that, trying to get back into the jet stream, you have to swim at a very weird angle yeah. to get the star. If you screw up one swim, it's pretty bad. Yeah. So it looks like he'll be going upstairs just over an hour and five minutes. Uh, so overall, this is a really, really good run for a marathon. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm pretty sure the name of the star is Collect the Caps. And as you'll see, he's going to come up and get Vanish Cap. And to the left, you can see Metal Cap, but we didn't hit the switch, so there's no cap there. So you're intended to get both those caps and then run over to this gate, but it's just faster to swim over. Using the metal cap in the water is not actually that fast because it takes him a long time to drop to the bottom and then running is not that fast. Yeah, and while he's dropping, you can't move forwards or backwards. Yeah. So here he's going to go back in the stage and then quit the level. It's the fastest way to get to the lobby, which will bring him back upstairs. Okay, so upstairs portion. Uh, this is 
probably the hardest part. This is when uh, RNG and stuff starts getting really prominent. And in a run, you'll, you'll be getting pretty nervous at this point, too, yeah. especially if it's a good run. Even like now, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, Cheese's upstairs is pretty legendary, so... Compared to like shifting Sandland and HMC, I'm less concerned because this is always just such a treat to watch. Yeah, they've just recently been pushing their upstairs quite a bit. Um, and now they're at the point where they're able to do from when you touch the door to the end in under 36 minutes, which is pretty insane. For that side flip triple jump wall kick he did, um, what you have to do is you have to delay like the second jump so that your angle changes. And if you, it's like kind of tricky to time it. But that, that's how that works. Like your angle changes with the delay. Yeah, and he'll do it again here. For whatever reason, after a side flip, you can wait quite a while before you do your double jump. See, right there. So he had a weird angle with the side flip, but he just fixes it with the double jump. Yeah, and luckily the, the camera it gives you allows you to just hold straight up uh, mm -hmm. for the double jump portion. You lose a lot of time if you screw up that on either of those stars. Probably like 10 seconds. But In practice, I saw him mess it up a couple of times, and it's like you barely even know what to do to get back there. Yeah, it sucks. If you react fast enough, you can hold back and grab that ledge, but it's pretty hard to react to. All right, this is a wet dry world secrets. Um, like I said earlier, like if you screw up badly, your game can actually like freeze here because of the sound glitch, which is Japanese only. But uh, th that probably won't happen. Yeah, it's super uncommon. Hopefully, I've actually done it in a, in a race before uh, when I hadn't saved the entire time, so. It's basically a guaranteed forfeit. As long as you get that long jump under the box, you're good. Yeah, just long jump here. We're good. You're good. Nice to have dry world so far. 100 coin is next. Uh, this 100 coin doesn't have much RNG, really. Very technical, though. Uh, yeah. One of the more That's, a, that's an understatement. Yeah, it's one of the ones that looks, looks quite simple, actually, but there's an insane amount of tiny little optimizations that he does. I don't think it looks simple at all. <laughs> I think it's pretty complicated. Well, you make it look simple. I'll take that. So you start at the top by getting a lot of the uh, fast coins. A lot of the secret boxes give a lot of coins, 10 coins from each of those boxes, and then he comes down here to get the reds and the rest of the 100. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the boxes. If you go too fast, you'll miss a coin or two, and you have to like kill, you either have to like chase the coin or kill one of the spiders in this town area. There's a recent optimization at, back at that part where basically with uh, the same side flip that destroys the box, you can wall kick with that same side flip. <sighs> until that, that was near flawless. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was insanely good until then. So Possibly. here he's going to grab the star and clip up onto the ledge. If you're right next to a wall and you grab a star and you do a big enough jump, you'll just land up on the ledge and that's how, it's just faster than ground pounding the star there and then jumping up on the ledge. One of the very few times that jumping completely is faster. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a donation or two, this is probably a good time to read it. Okay, we have $500 from Witness the Klutz. They say, this is my wife and I's second GDQ, and we love watching runners do their thing. We actually just played Portal 2 together for the first time last week. Put this money towards Portal 2. We've got $170 from Delfina, $10 for every death in Super Panga World. Mario runs always have the best runners, best couches, and most interesting strats. Loving this SM64 run. So this part right here, um, it's very hard to actually do well. Um, like there's a lot of tiny little mistakes you can make during this part and usually when you do it it snowballs into more mistakes so it's good that he did that part well there 
One thing to note about Wet Dry World is depending on where you enter the portrait, the water level changes. So for that star, he entered with a backflip, but now for this star, he entered very low, so the water will be non-existent, pretty much. It'll be a very dry world. A good thing now is that extended periods of swimming is, like, over now. Like, you do a little more swimming, but not much at all. Something like TTM and THI. Mm -hmm. Almost dropped my controller. So now he's going into THI or Tiny Huge Island. And if you go in this left painting, which we will always do for every star, it'll start in the tiny world. But if you go to the right, you'll go to the huge world. Yeah, the only scenario where it's actually faster to enter the big painting is when you do the red coins by itself. But uh, that is not done in 120 star because it's paired with 100 coin. Some players opt to do it in 70 star. Nice. That was really good. So if that water, that little puddle at the top of the mountain wasn't there, he would have just clipped through and fell down and died, but it's always there. And when you clip into water, you just teleport to the top. And if you have enough speed and you do a dive, you can clip through that mountain. And he'll do that later in the huge version of the world. This star has quite a bit of RNG to it because you have to kill a lot of Goombas and they can just like walk wherever they want to. Also, uh, for the Bingoobas, you always want to ground pound them because they give you a blue coin. Uh, if you just jump, which sometimes players will do by accident, you just get a yellow coin. Yeah, or if you accidentally bonk into a Goomba while trying to ground pound, it'll just knock you in the air and then you'll also hit the Goomba and then you'll have to go ground pound to back up Goomba, which is quite slow. So what happened there with that second Goomba, I got really scared because it was really close, so I just stayed close to the gate, and some weird stuff happened, but uh, I didn't mess it up, so it's fine. Yeah, it's about the best way to explain it, some weird stuff. That's kind of Super Mario 64 in a nutshell, as far as the speed run. For, this, for that part, um, I don't know if anyone's figured it out yet, but the fly guy can go towards you early when you jump over there, which is pretty bad. Um, I wish I knew like why he does that. Depends which direction you're facing. That's what I've heard, but I don't know. It doesn't feel like it. This feels random. Reds here are a little scary. If you yeah. fall, you lose like two minutes. It minute wasn't that half. scary. He didn't do the sicko kick. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a tiny little optimization there called sicko kick, which is very precise, and Punke goes for it and runs. Yeah, it's just instead of side flip diving and rolling out to the blue coin switch, you just do a single jump and a kick, and it's, it's super scary. And after you do a kick, you can't grab onto a ledge, so if you don't make it up, you just die. Mm -hmm. Got to save that those That was a nice 100. Though. This has been a good THI so far. Yes. Those are pretty much the hardest stars of this level. The rest um, are not too bad. For that, if you just side flip while holding like right or whatever, um, you can clip through the thing at the top. You can also clip through that. You can clip through a lot of things in this game. Yeah, so basically you just clip through the wall and then swim directly into the loading zone. Yeah, what you're meant to do is ground pound the top of the tiny island, and that drains the water. And then you come to the huge island, and you walk all the way up there and go in the hole. But the hole is always there, so you clip through and then swim into it. All the mini boss fights are incredibly hard in this game. <laughs> The only hard boss fight is the last one where you have to throw Bowser. Curly Koopa is the diff most difficult yes. boss. Agreed. So he's going to do that clip again for this star. I don't do the strat. I don't know. You don't I, do I don't do it either. either. I just know yeah, that it's a, really, it's a little it's, optimization. It's quite difficult. It's super cool looking. It's super fast. On top of being hard to do, it saves a small enough amount of time that even if you do it slowly, it's just the same speed as doing the other side. So that was it. quick. That was yeah, very good. that was good. nice. This is a good THI. Buttery. Buttery, yes. I agree. Mm. Extremely. Beautiful. Elegant. Tremendous. <laughs> All right, so we have some time for donations. All right, we have a $1,392.80 donation from Fish Sticks. <laughs> Woo! 
He says, had to save the big donation for my favorite speedrun, Mario 64, 120 star. Big ups to Cheese and all the M64 runners for pushing this game so, so much further than anyone thought possible. And to all the GDQ organizers, volunteers, runners, attendees, and viewers online, you are awesome and should feel awesome. Peace, fish sticks. So coming up here is the second race with Koopa the Quick. Um, Semi-recently, we started actually doing this race by using the shell uh, from the little Koopa. Uh, they used to just actually do a route where you'd run the entire way. And it, say, it improves your race time by about usually four to five seconds, maybe, mm -hmm. um, which maybe saves like a second or two uh, real time or whatever. Yeah, same thing. Once you finish, the Koopa goes faster. So the faster you finish the race, the better. A good race time is probably sub-14. Yeah, any 13 is good. And if you're one with the shell, you can get a 12. Hmm. It's not going to be 13. A weird mechanic with shells is if you can go, you can be going very slow, and if you go on a slope and you're angled going down the slope and you jump, you gain a ton of speed. Yeah, so we, we try to use slopes whenever we can when we're using a shell to speed it up. And yeah. every jump with a shell also increases your speed. Yeah, he'll utilize the... Uh, using a slope to gain speed in Snowman's Land as well, mm -hmm. in the 100 coin star. All right, the next level is TTM, a.k.a. Telltale Mountain. AKA uh, a lot of people hate this level. Yeah, um, it's my most hated level. I always have problems with it. Um, it for me, it's the hardest level, but uh, it's either you do it well or you don't, really. Yes! Beautiful form. All right, so All right he's going to try Breezeless and... You want to like triple jump at like the peak height of it, really. And if you do it right, you'll see what happens. Uh, Very close. So if he was just a little bit higher there, the ground pound would have clipped him up into the fence. Yeah, the whole reason it works is because of that fence, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm honestly not sure like how it works exactly. Um, I have like I don't think I've ever really gotten it consistently. It's just one of those tricks where. You get it or you don't, really. Yeah, luckily it's a small time saver, and you don't lose a ton for failing it either. Um, I think it's about four seconds, I'd say, is roughly. Speaking of even less. weird things that work, just jumping that, into the wall. That's called log wheel kick. It's been around for a long time. Uh, runners didn't start doing it until, like, I don't know, a couple of years back or something. It saves, like, a, around 1.5 each time you do it. But uh, I think... Back to Breezes, I think it originated as like a TAS strat because of how hard it is. You need like a ridiculous amount of height with your triple jump. So TTM has some pretty difficult stuff. So this trick right here is called Mountain Clip. He jump dives at the peak of the slope. It clips him through, and he lands into that water. And whenever you land into water, you just get teleported to the top. So he immediately goes to the top of the water. Yeah, there's two bodies. Or, well... I'm not 100% sure, but um, like there's one body that's lower, and then there's one that's higher, and if you just swim from the lower one to the higher one, it just warps you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what he does is he'll just jump dive straight into the higher one. But they're both pretty fast. But if you're doing a jump dive, it's faster to go into the higher one. Yeah, the, the mountain clip basically entirely breaks this level, which is good for the speed run. Okay, so for, th for this star, like, you want to grab the monkey when the monkey's on like the slope so that you can yeah like that so you can keep a hold onto the monkey so that you can jump here and ground pound with a lot of height and the monkey will just quickly talk to you instead of having to wait for the monkey to go all the way down the mountain it, it saves like i don't know 20 plus it's a lot yeah he gives you two options when you grab him he either says let me go or hold on to him and what we did was we let him go but since we're on the slope, it didn't let him go, so the game thought he was doing his... Because what he'll do is you'll let him go, and he'll walk all the way down, and then he'll talk to you. But we kind of tricked the game into thinking that he already did it, and we just did a precise... Not, not that precise, but kind of a precise ground pound. Yeah, and if you fail the ground pound, he can do some weird things. Sometimes he'll just go up to the top of the mountain and start spinning in circles, and you can't talk to him. As long as you have the right angle there, that one's not too bad. Yeah, that one's pretty much a guarantee. That doesn't stop me from clenching every time I see it done, Every though. time. So here we have another classic, 100 plus reds. Yeah, 
Some of the coolest movement in the game, I think, is these upcoming reds and yeah. coins. Oh, I need those coins. Round two. Yes. Okay, not too shabby. Good backup. We'll come back for that star later. We need to go into the slide to get many coins. Yeah, so... You want to miss one coin on the slide and exit with 99. Um, if you, there's a lot of backups if you miss coins, though. Uh, they don't lose too much, but... Yeah, if you miss two coins, you just kill two bombs. If you miss three, you can either kill all three bombs or just go for the Chukya. Yeah. There's also five coins on a bridge that's about the same speed as the Chukya. Yeah. And you miss a coin here because if you don't, then the 100 coin star will like spawn on the slide, which is uh, a disaster, obviously. <laughs> There's a way to spawn it and get it and still survive, but let's say he didn't miss a coin and you weren't aware that that happened, but like if you're running, you're aware, but it would spawn right here and then you could get the star, but he would be turned towards the camera back that way and he'd just slide backwards and die. You wouldn't have enough speed to make it over the gap. So we get our last coin here from a bomb. And the jump to the red coin star is clutter with invisibles, but we usually have different ways to avoid you, them. You, you go right, then left, and yeah. you usually avoid it. You'll kind of arch his long jump here. Yeah, like that. That, that was, was good. Good TTM all around. Uh, it's a very difficult stage to pull everything off. So. All right, Snowman's Land is coming up. This area is really fast. Lots of fast stars. Um, it, the 100 coin probably has the most RNG throughout the entire run, so I, I personally really do not like doing it. It's, an, it's a really, really good stage, except for 100 coin. I think most runners hate that star. I also hate Snowman's Head. Yeah. That wall kick is very tough to do. That was very nice. If you go too high, you'll bonk. If you go too low, it, it's just kind of weird. It's a very small wall that you're trying to wall kick on. Yeah, I think Punk A mentioned like it's a an extremely fast stage. Like it just it it's gone in a second, and so it's kind of like a speedrunner's dream with how much how movement intensive it is. Yeah, uh, every single star, if done well, except for hundred coin, is under twenty seconds. Okay. That to me is like the hardest star in the game. So I'm glad I didn't mess that up. Yeah, the camera in the igloo is absolutely atrocious, so handling it well is uh, very difficult. You can read a quick donation if you want. Okay, I've got a quick one. We got $100 from Pangea Panga. Yeah, Panga. <laughs> he says, this is for Dode, destroying my butt in Super Panga World. <laughs> also, hi, Simply. Hey, Panga. For that star he just did, if you don't bonk into the box like that, if you time your ground pound, then it saves like a second over like the like easy like guaranteed strat. It's a pretty cool optimization, though. So it's time for 100 coin. Uh, yeah, this is an RNG fest. That was really good. That was RNG. insanely good. Thank you, money bag. That's the kind of RNG you never get if you're on a good run. But oh, basically, no. you kill a bunch of enemies throughout this 100 coin, and you kill two money bags, and the money bags can get like heavily impacted by uh, RNG. That like all the, every coin can just go like flying in a different direction. It's like the worst. Yeah, I don't really actually feel like it's RNG. I feel like it's hate you. Like the RNG is just hateful every single time. Unless you're on a bad run, then it loves you. But it doesn't matter then. Um, I need this Goomba. Um, he killed that Goomba so that he has an extra coin. So if he gets screwed over by the money bag, then he can hopefully, like... By, by screwed over by the money bag, I mean one of the coins can go into, like, uh, the ice under the bully. And you can't really, like, get it because it just disappears immediately. So if one coin goes there and he gets all the others, he'll be fine. That's why he killed the Goomba. So here he's going to utilize using the slope to get speed on the uh, okay. shell again. A noticeable increase in speed there after the slope jump. All right, so here's the second money bag. That one wasn't great. Yeah. 
Not the greatest, but it could have gone much worse there. It's still nice to have an extra coin because for the last spin drift he's about to kill, um, you can get very bad RNG and a coin can fall, but he just has to grab two now. So this is pretty safe. All right, it was good RNG, was but nice. I wanted to make sure, so I grabbed an extra coin. The marathon safe strat. Yeah. The what only safe strat I've done for the run so far. Yeah, you've been actually going pretty, like, flat out the entire time. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing uh, all the strats that I can, you know. Okay, this next off. star is, like, really intense. It takes, like, 100 hours of practice to get it down. I think you mean 1,000. <laughs> I was pretty off, sorry. Wow, he did it. What a guy. Oh, my wow. goodness. How is he so good? Legend. God Legend. Gamer. That's why he's the world record holder right there. <laughs> Here we have another joke of a boss <laughs> coming up. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> that, that's the real thousands of hours. <laughs> All right, he's, he's going to Tippy, which is like the tip top of the castle. It's just like the last stages in the game or like in, in this run. Um, it, it's pretty difficult. There's a lot of precise parts, you can lose a lot of time or, or like die, especially in uh, Rainbow Ride. I guess one thing to note, I think it was the last time we had a 120 race here uh, between these three. Uh, and they had a total of three deaths in Cloud Stage, which yeah. spawn you outside the castle. This stage gives me nightmares. Two of which by Simply. Yeah, if you fall down here, then you lose like, it's like a minute to minute 30 seconds. Thanks for making me nervous. <laughs> Anytime. You're no, welcome. No pressure. Because if you fall, you'll just land all the way back to where you started the game, out in the courtyard. For uh, the third red coin back there, there's a, there's a pretty unsafe strat where you don't land on the cloud and you just fly and grab it like he did in SSL earlier. But no one really does it, at least in like a really good run. Because you can just like land on, your, on Mario's like, belly and then slide off. Your run's over. Ogre. I don't think he does a strat here, does he? No. Do you want to talk about it, simply? So he's going to get this coin first, and then he's going to get the coin that's under the pole. But there's another strat that it saves either a second or two seconds, where you get oh. that coin first that he just got, and then you go and get the other coin. So you do a little triple jump, and you turn around, get that coin, then go over. That's so the strat that I the do. The point of that part was to skip grabbing the pole, but it's very, very difficult. Yeah. You survived. Nicely done. Yeah, that's, that's the, only the really key there, as long as you don't die. All right, this level is called TikTok Clock. This is really, really it's fast intense. and crazy. Like, so many crazy things. Insane. Uh, so one thing to note, um, if you enter the clock when the minute hand is at the 12, everything will be stopped. Um, and then if he enters between 6 and 12, which he'll also do, uh, the things will be moving. Yeah, everything is moving, pretty much. It's a very animated stage. Oh, so he grabbed an extra red coin back there. I think Cheese is the only player I know who does that. But it, it's, it's similar to Wet Dry World 100 coin in a way, because you destroy boxes with like 10 coins in each box. So if you get like really bad RNG or like go too fast or something, you can miss one. But he has two extra now, so he can just like go really fast. He doesn't have to worry about it. There's an invisible coming up here after this box. There's actually a couple invisibles, but he avoided it. He's safe though. Yeah. yeah. Now we're good. It's a pretty solid hundred overall. That, yeah, yeah there's a couple of jump mishaps, but that was good. Yeah. The tricky part is this ending part right here. Oh. All those firsties. It depends on the, pos the position of the thwomp, and you kind of have to react to the sound, but you can get something called a good ending, and it's basically when you like wall kick off the thwomp, so you can do like a jump, like a wall kick dive into the star. It saves like a second, but it's kind of hard. A second, really? It's around that, because it skips like an entire wall kick, pretty sure. Yeah. This movement here is kind of new. 
Oh, it's a beat that pendulum. Oh. Yeah, the swinging thing more will less. usually knock you out of the way, but if you do that movement, you're able to get there before. Yeah, there's, there's two more stars where you do that triple jump wall kick at the beginning, and that, that triple jump wall kick is the hardest part of the three stars, so if you get it down, then you kind of have those three stars down, in my opinion. I'd agree. In practice, it's not too hard, but when you're at this point in the run, you're usually very nervous. Yeah, nerves are a huge factor. Um, and it's really punishing a tip because most mistakes result in a death, so you, you can do a lot of little things that are wrong when you're nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mentioned uh, how Cheese had messed with a, a heart rate monitor before. When he was closing in on the world record where he was, I think it was like when he was five seconds off of uh, 139, his heart rate climbed over like 170 or 180 when he was going through TT, or a tic tac clock. So that's all the time moving stars. He's going to do two more with the minute hand at 12, which is red coins, and uh, what's the name of the other star? Time oh. jumps on moving bars, yeah. I think. Yep. Which I think he's doing next. Yeah. Do we have time for a donation? Yeah. We have $1,000 from Dubanka. He says, I saved up my allowance for years to buy an N64 and one game on release. Needless to say, I bought Wayne Gretzky's Hockey. <laughs> Good choice. In retrospect, SMB64 may have been a better choice. <laughs> Good luck, Cheese. Oh no. Yeah, you can't really ledge grab on these things. They have weird properties on the edges. Yeah, and if you miss one, you fall all the way down every time, pretty much. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> this is other than that, hard hard other than that, that was a nice team. <laughs> yeah. Other than that. <laughs> That star is very... I never like that star because if you fall down there, it's like trying to solve a maze. I looked at the timer. If you get a nice uh, rainbow ride in Sky, you can get like a 141, I believe. Yeah. Like a mid-141 if it's really good. Yeah. So consistent with the Toad stars. Absolutely incredible gameplay. All right, this level is kind of scary. You can, there's a lot of places you can die, and he's going to start off doing something called Lockety Bounce. Uh, if you screw it up, it loses a few seconds. Um, so you have to you do it twice it. throughout the run. There's many ways to do this. Yeah, so he moves in a pretty specific way to manipulate the Lockety to fall right under him as he wall kicks. And the the Lockety Bounce he, strat he did is like the old bounce. There was a newer, like easier bounce. There's a newer, easier bounce that was discovered. This like it's like a second or two slower, but it's like in my opinion, it's way easier. But I probably just suck at the older one. The older one is is quite a bit harder. You have to move. It just takes forever to learn how to move the right way. Okay, this starts tricky triangles. It's it's kind of scary if your angle like right there is like too far to the left, then you'll like wall kick and probably die. That was really good. Speed kick ground pound. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So now's the 100 coin. Uh, there's, there is a bit of RNG here. Um, he's also going to kill a Lakitu later that drops five coins, and they can sometimes troll you pretty hard, but yeah. there's backups. A nice time save is if that fly guy gave him both coins, then he could skip a red coin. Yeah, if you get all from the fly guy and the Lakitu. Mm -hmm. But now he just has one extra coin, so he can miss one of these and just continue. Oh, I didn't need that one, but oh well. I can't believe this guy is not doing carpetless. <laughs> nice man. Yeah. 
So he's opening the cannon now for when he after when he does the second Lakitu bounce. That's always a really fun jump to see because it doesn't look like you should be able to do that. But Okay, there's nothing really going on on this carpet, right? So if you have a lot of donations, this is the perfect time to yeah, read that, them. Yeah, there's like a 1 minute and 30 seconds uh, rest right now. All right, I do have a lot of donations. Let's start it off with $1,000 from J. Fry K. <laughs> he just says, let's make Portal happen. I agree. <laughs> We've got $100 from Jason32, been watching since 2014, and I'm always proud of how much we raise every year as a community here. Keep up the awesome runs. We have $100 from Lady Adelise. After spending days of my childhood going after 120 stars, it's breathtaking to watch it be done in just a couple of hours. Now let's see some Portal 2. We have $15 from Jamis, who says, Wah! Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> We've got a $120 anonymous donation that just says, Good luck, cheese! Thank you. <laughs> we have $300 from Adrian Speed Lovers. Hi, GDQ. Thank you for all runners. I love what you do. Winter or summer, GDQ rocks. Please give this to Portal 2 and Kisses from France. We've got a $100 anonymous donation that says, this Super Mario 64 speedrun is really awesome to watch. Here's $100 to support this great cause. <laughs> yeah, so the carpet ride's kind of like the calm before the storm, I guess, while you finish the run. If you're on like a really, really good run, your heart's going to be like pounding, so it's a nice breather. Yeah, you get to collect yourself a little bit. That trick looks pretty scary, but if you fail the wall kick, you'll just land back on the carpet. And the, uh, the nice meme carpetless was basically all that trick is, is it's a TAS only strat that's pretty much impossible, but everyone always says to go for it. It's been done once by a human using save states. No. If you screw it up that way, it probably, it's hard to say how much it loses, probably like around six-ish, maybe eight. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, the yeah. time in for jumping after landing on the slope is pretty tough, too. Oh, by the way, this is why you keep uh, red coins, because it's a quick backup. But he doesn't have that backup now. Yeah, he's got swinging in the breeze and lack of two bounce left. You could back up with swinging in the breeze, but I don't really like doing that. Yeah, it's a yeah. last resort. Yeah, last case, Ontario. The side flip's pretty cool. Oh, never mind. He's too optimized. That's a new yeah, optimization, yeah. I think. Yeah, we it's used to a, do a, a windy run. side flip. For that cannon shot, you just want to aim it. You just want the bottom like arrow to be right above the, the rainbow. The, like the bottom of the ring, yeah. Yeah. There's been a quite a few times, though, where you, get, you have to get the Lucky 2 bounce. And after you do like the carpet ride and everything, and you're like, all right. You know, I'm, I'm loose, I'm good, and then all of a sudden you miss the Lakitu bounce, and you're like, well, it's over. <laughs> this is probably the easiest star in Rainbow Ride. There's a couple things that can go wrong, but... Yeah, but it's rare. This angle here is kind of precise. It's not an angle that's in the notch of your controller, so... Well, the ride's good. So we're heading into the final Bowser now. <laughs> this can probably, yeah, mid-141 if, uh, if it goes well, so... Yeah. It's an insane time for a marathon. Getting up these stairs can be a pain sometimes. Sometimes you just eat your jumps yeah. constantly. And what you're supposed to do there is push that box, but we don't even bother. There's like a normal cycle, and then there's like a fast cycle. The fast cycle seems like one. To, it seems like 1.5 to two seconds. He was going to go for it, but he screwed up the rollout. 
This is kind of a newer optimization here. Oh. oh. Never mind. Yeah, he was going to try to side flip over the flame, but it can be fickle. Yeah. Not a big time loss, though. So getting on a pole from the base like that, the reason he kind of glitched at the bottom is because when you grab a pole at the bottom, you don't actually grab it. You like you glitch onto it, and if you tap B right as you glitch onto it, you grab it for real. Because I think the dive might give you a little bit of height. to. You just can't grab the bottom of a pole for whatever reason. So there you just spam B. All right, the 120th star. Time for Bowser throws. Uh, infamous Bowser in the sky. That's one. Two. Oh, yeah. You can do this. You got this. Speed running! <laughs> yeah! Insane time for America. Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> 141.39. That was the most cheese possible ending. Yeah. Excellent job. Hello, hello. You're still on. Yeah, um, I'd like to do some shout outs to my family, of course, because they're watching right now. And I want to I wanna thank them for supporting me and uh, believing that this, you know, this could work for me. And I'd like to shout out Copits and Mario Fan, because I know they donated a lot for me to shout out, and they're, they're really good friends. So uh, shout outs to them and, uh, well, friends, family, and everyone who came to watch. And yeah, man, I'm Super Mario 64. That's it. Let's hear it one more that time for Cheese. What a fantastic run. Got a great time for a marathon. Always look forward to Cheese's runs. And Super Mario 64 is always a pleasure to watch. You are watching Summer Games Done Quick, a charity marathon where all proceeds go to Doctors Without Borders.